Um, you said that one of the bases of your entire philosophy is your naturalism, your belief that science is the only road to knowledge. I wonder if you have some way of characterizing knowledge. Um, the problem I'm concerned with is this, that if knowledge is itself defined as the products of science, then naturalism, the thesis of naturalism, turns into an empty stipulation. In saying, let me just clarify, in saying that um, the, uh, that science is the only way to knowledge, we would be saying that science is the only way to give us the products of science. The only way to, to give us the products of science. If knowledge yeah. is defined as whatever science produces. I think it, uh, I think it does come to pretty much that. Uh, um, and uh, it, it, what, it, what it excludes is, uh, is uh, revelation. I wouldn't say it excludes. Uh, uh, I, I wouldn't say it ex excludes telepathy. That's uh, just uh, one of the s s fallible scientific findings that telepathy is impossible. It doesn't work. That is to say, and uh, maybe it does. But uh, uh, the uh, uh, yes, I, well, I, I, I would agree with you that the uh, uh, that natural int uh, intuitive way of Putting naturalism, and certainly very likely the, the, the exact way I've done it, uh, uh, is uh, is rough and uh, uh, raises question. In the first place, the very notion of knowledge, uh, I think, is a questionable notion. Uh, uh, it uh, knowledge has to be true according to usage, uh, and uh, 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 science and, uh, and uh, our, our our warranted beliefs generally. Are, are fallible. Uh, I think well, uh, here again we have the situation where, where uh, paradoxically, the theory of knowledge has uh, come up with the conclusion that there's no such thing as knowledge. But uh, the uh, but the game of science, it seems to me, is characterized. It, its distinguishing feature is um, direct or indirect uh, um, testability by observation. So uh, are you saying implicitly that perhaps a better formulation of naturalism would be as a normative principle, which says, don't believe anything unless it's reached by the scientific method? Uh, well, good. Uh, uh, I would, I, of course, I would subscribe to that, uh, uh, that normative principle. Uh, maybe it's arbitrary whether we include that as part of, the, part of what goes with the word naturalism. It certainly would be the naturalist attitude. Your response, I think, to, uh, to Paul was to say that um, by all means, knowledge can be, um, perhaps by stipulation, uh, limited to the products of science, and you even accepted this normative principle. Um, where does that leave the possibility of um, knowledge about ethics, uh, knowledge about political matters, knowledge about culinary matters, um, knowledge about uh, musical and literary matters. Um, indeed, if, uh, if the putative science of intentional psychology is in as bad shape as, um, as you rather suspect it is, um, even knowledge of uh, everyday psychological matters would seem to be threatened by uh, what began uh, looking uh, like a pretty innocent uh, piece of agreement between the two of you. So um, could you just clarify uh, whether we really can live with um, the idea that we shouldn't form any beliefs about these matters and certainly can't attain any knowledge about these matters? Uh, no, what, what I uh, accept rather is, uh, is the uh, gradations of, uh, of uh, uh, justified belief uh, and, of course, uh, all sorts of gradations in the uh, uh, vagueness of a, uh, a statement. And uh, uh, I, I consider furthermore that to most of, the, of, uh, of what we accept and, uh, 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 and uh, uh, what I accept uh, uh, as uh, true 
pending information to the contrary. Uh, the sort of thing that can't be, uh, certainly can't be directly tested by uh, observation, by deducing a, 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 an observation categorical. Uh, and uh, 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 I think uh, a great deal of it, if not uh, overwhelming part of it, uh, is not even indirectly testable in the sense of that uh, you could uh, uh, add this hypothesis to another bundle of hypotheses that would make the difference of, uh, of, uh, of uh, uh, critical mass. Uh, uh, and, uh, uh, but that all these are, are, are worthwhile, they're reasonable beliefs, they fill out the picture, they suggest further hypotheses which can be tested. Uh, uh, and uh, uh, the point about uh, the test, this, this, the empirical element in all of this, for me, is just that insofar as there is test, it's that. Right. I wonder whether um, anything is resting on the term science. Um, you spoke then of the empirical element, and uh, the idea might be don't form beliefs unless you can somehow incorporate those beliefs into some network of empirical questions. There might be some version of a, of, um, a normative principle. But what uh, was actually on offer, I think, was uh, don't form beliefs unless they're arrived at by the scientific method. Now, reading somebody's biography and arriving at uh, some conclusion about their psychological state um, is arriving at a claim which is empirical and has testable consequences. But it's hardly arriving at a claim uh, via the scientific method, I suppose. Yes, I think that's a good objection. Yeah. Uh, yes. Uh, that, yes, that's certainly a bad way of uh, putting it, uh, arrived at by the by scientific method. Uh, yes, it's uh, uh, rather that the, uh, that should be regarded as the, as, as the limit, the ultimate in uh, 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 making, making something uh, uh, acceptable and, uh, uh, and uh, virtually undeniable. Uh, the, the, te the test is the only kind of, the, the, the test by observation uh, is the only kind of test that uh, uh, can be asked or can be claimed for these things. But by no means uh, uh, can, we, can we limit our, our beliefs to what we can subject to such tests. They should fit into the whole overall picture, which insofar as it is sustained, by evidence is sustained in just that way at the periphery. Yes, uh, I notice your naturalism excludes uh, revelation, which is. Uh, I've also noticed that uh, although we keep inviting you to move, take, produce something like a transcendental argument, you always refuse. Uh, you seem never to take to take that that style. It would be fair to say that one characterization of your naturalism is just a decision not to use transcendental arguments. Um, do you commit them anywhere? Uh, no, I think it's uh, I think it's part of the concept of naturalism. Yeah, reject it. Yes. So I think that's what sets your yeah. response about skepticism apart from so many other people. For example, uh, uh, Davidson is not to make a transcendental move on it at all. Indeed, I don't know a single time today you've used such an argument, and I think that's in, in some ways is a an interesting way of characterizing your position. That if you're empiricist, you really are. And there aren't ever any backup transcendental arguments that are going to be brought in. You certainly didn't use a transcendental argument for induction, for example, which is a, yes. uh, which Strawson does. Just at no point do you do it. And I think that might be one way of responding to the question, what constitutes the naturalism? Uh, I think that's good, yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Down with transcendental arguments. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah.